Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Crown Academy of English. Today's lesson is a vocabulary lesson and it's about common phrasal verbs. So, in this lesson you will learn eight common phrasal verbs. Carry out, carry on, call off, call back, fill out, hold on, sort out, and hand in. Okay? So these are very common phrasal verbs and it's really important that you understand them and know how to use them. So let's start. So carry out something. What does this mean? Well it means simply to do something or to complete something. So to do a task or to complete a task. Example. The doctor carried out an x-ray on the patient. The doctor carried out an x-ray on the patient. So here we have the past simple form of carry, which is I-E-D at the end. So this means simply the doctor um, did an x-ray on the patient. So this is this is an x-ray. We call this an x-ray in English. Okay? Another example. We need to carry out more research into the effects of pollution. We need to carry out more research into the effects of pollution. So we need to do more research. Okay, so carry out to do something. Carry on. So this means to continue to do something. And the form is carry on followed by the ing form of a verb. Example. The teacher says, The lesson has not finished. Carry on reading. Carry on reading. So we have carry on followed by another verb in the ing form. So this means continue reading or continue to read. Okay, so carry on reading. ing. I told him to rest, but he carried on running. He carried on running. So he continued to run. He continued running. And again here, we, it is in the past tense. So don't forget the form. It is I-E-D at the end. Jane asks, what are you going to do tomorrow? Mark replies, I'm going to carry on painting the living room. I'm going to carry on painting the living room. So he's painting the living room. So I'm going to continue painting the living room. So this implies that Mark had already started painting the living room. Perhaps he started yesterday. And tomorrow he's going to carry on painting the living room. Okay, so carry on, continue to do something. To call off something. So this means to decide that a planned event will not happen. So to, to decide that a planned event in the future will not happen. To end an activity because it is no longer useful or possible. Or simply to cancel an event. So here is a common example. They have called off the football match because of bad weather. So this is in the active voice. This is the normal structure in the active voice. They have called off the football match because of bad weather. They have cancelled the football match. Okay? They have decided that the football match will not happen. 
Okay, it's no longer possible because of the bad weather, because of the storm, the lightning. We can also put this sentence into the passive. So in the passive, we say the football match has been called off because of bad weather. So this is the passive voice in the past tense. The football match has been called off. Okay. And some more examples of call off something. So here is the definition again. And let's look at two more examples of this. Jane and Mark have called off the wedding. So they have called off the wedding. So perhaps before the wedding, they had a big argument and they separated and they decided to cancel the wedding. Okay, they have called off the wedding. Okay. The concert has been called off. The concert has been called off. And so here we have another example of the passive voice has been called off. So this is the passive past tense. Okay. And this one is the active. Jane and Mark have called off the wedding. This is present perfect. Okay. To call someone back. So this means to telephone someone who has telephoned you. To return a phone call to someone. So an example. Jane says, hi Sarah, how are you? And Sarah replies, hi Jane, I'm busy. I will call you back later. I will call you back later. Okay, so Sarah will telephone Jane later when she is no longer busy. Okay, Sarah will, retu will return the phone call to Jane later. Mark asks, did you call the company about the job? And David replies, yes, but they didn't call me back. They didn't call me back. Okay, notice when we talk about a company, um, we refer to the company in the plural. So that is why we say they, because we consider a company, we are thinking about the people who work for the company. So we are thinking in terms of plural. So we say yes, but they didn't call me back. Okay, we don't say it didn't call me back. No, we say they didn't call me back, the company. So this means that the company didn't return my call. They didn't telephone me. To fill out a form, this is very useful, very, very common. So fill out, we'll, we, we usually use this when we're talking about a form. So this means to complete a form to write information in the blank spaces of a form. A form is a piece of paper with questions on it and it's asking you for information. For example, a form will ask you for your name, your address, your phone number, some information about yourself. Okay, and you fill out a form with a pen. Okay. So here is a very common example, an application form for a job. So the person, the secretary asks you, please fill out the application form. Okay. Please fill out the application form and then send the application form to the company. I filled out a form for life insurance. I filled out a form for life insurance. So this means I completed a form 
for life insurance. I wrote my name, my phone number, my address on the form for life insurance. I filled out the form. Hold on. This is very, very common. So this means to wait for a short amount of time. And a very common example, Mark asks, are you ready to go out? And Jane replies, no, hold on a few minutes. So Jane is asking Mark to wait just for a few minutes while she is getting ready. Okay, while she is perhaps getting dressed or putting her makeup on. Okay, she's not quite ready. So she asks Mark to hold on a few minutes. It's raining. Hold on, I'll get my umbrella. It's raining. Um, just wait a second, I'll get my umbrella. And this is an example of perhaps a telephone call because we use hold on um, very often during a telephone call. So the dentist asks the patient, when are you available for the appointment? And the patient replies, hold on please, I'll check my diary. I'll check my diary. So here is the diary. So when you're speaking on the phone and someone asks you a question while you're looking for something, if you need a pen, for example, or a diary, or if you, yes, if you need to find something in your bag, then you will say, hold on, please. So it's just a, a very good way of asking someone to wait for a few minutes, okay, or a short time, a few seconds or a few minutes. To sort out something, sort out something, you hear this a lot. This means to solve a problem or to manage a difficult situation. An example in the office, we need to sort out the problem with the printer. We need to sort out the problem with the printer. We need to solve the problem with the printer. In other words, we need to repair the printer or we need to get the printer repaired. Okay? Sort out, solve a problem. Mark says there is a problem with the electricity. And the electrician replies, don't worry, I will sort it out. So this is very common phrase. I will sort it out. I will solve the problem. This is what it means. I will solve the problem. I will sort it out. Okay. Hand in something. So if you go to school, you hear this a lot. And it's often a teacher who says this. So the meaning is to give something to someone in a position of authority. So for example, to give something to a teacher is a common example. Or to submit something. So an example, here we have an example in school with an exam. So the teacher says, don't forget to hand in your answer sheet. Don't forget to hand in your answer sheet. So this means don't forget to give me your answer sheet. Okay. Or don't forget to hand in your exam paper. Or don't forget to hand in your homework. Okay. So we often use this, as I said, in a school context. A teacher will always ask you to hand in your homework. Another example is in a hotel. We handed in the keys at reception. Okay, so when you, when you have a hotel room, 
and you have keys for the hotel. When you leave the hotel, you hand in the keys at reception. Okay, so to give something to someone in a position of authority. I found a wallet on the train. I handed it in at the station. I handed it in at the station. Okay, so this means I gave the wallet um, to someone at the station. Perhaps it was the lost property office. Okay, so it means I gave it to someone in a position of authority at the station. Okay, hand in something. So there we are, that's the end of the lesson. If you are preparing for the IELTS, I strongly recommend you take our IELTS online course. And here are some other videos which I recommend.